from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Roshan Lloyd D'Souza CSC. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from St. Mary Magdalene Parish in Fredericton, New Brunswick. This Mass is offered for the parishioners and their priests, Father Bill Brennan, Father Maria Arugiam Chinnapan, and Deacon Ken Parker for the newly appointed Bishop of the St. John Diocese of New Brunswick, Bishop Christian Resbeck, for victims of violence and human trafficking and the preservation of life for the unborn. Also, in honor of the Catholic Women's League of Canada. The parishioners of St. Dunstan's Parish have been faithful supporters of this daily Mass on television since we first began broadcasting. You have our thanks and the thanks of all who are gathered for this sacred celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we begin this Eucharist, we call to mind our sins, our failures, especially those times we have failed to love God and our neighbor. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Paul and Silas were in Philippi, the crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given Paul and Silas a severe flogging and threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely, following these instructions, he put them in an innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundation of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prison prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for the lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and your household. Paul and Silas spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set foot before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced, and he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. 
I give you thanks, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name. For your steadfast love and faithfulness. Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. Your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Your right hand has saved me, O oh Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, he said to, to the disciples, Now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The police were grilling the suspect hard, trying to persuade a confession out of him. Tensions were high, emotions worn down, but then his legal counsel walks into the room. 
Imagine yourself as that suspect, beaten down by interrogation. How would you feel seeing the face of your legal counsel coming to your aid? And this legal counsel is not just a hired gun. He is a trusted friend. He has been there for you in your past. He put his arm around your shoulder when you lost a dear friend. He celebrated your wedding with you. He listened and helped as you struggled with your career decisions. And now, in your hour of need, he comes, your comforter, your counselor. We have a much greater counselor at our side. In fact, he is living in us. Jesus himself promised to send this comforting counselor, the Holy Spirit. That's the theme of the day. Here Jesus says to you, I am sending you the comforting counselor. I am sending him, for I am living with my mission completed. I am sending him, for he comes to the world to work conviction. Jesus sends us the comforting counselor. How often we are caught up in our own grief and sadness. We focus on our troubles and problems, spending our time and money trying to fix things. We feel that everything bearing down on us, that we are in the hot seat in the interrogation room with the heavies breathing down our neck. We try to soothe our sadness by drowning them in one way or another. We call out to God, but it doesn't seem to work. So why bother, we figure. We fail to seek him in his word with the quiet confidence that our troubles and sadness will one day give way to joy and we will be better off having gone through them. Rather, that day seems just too far off and grief fills our hearts. But just as it was good for Jesus to be living, even though it saddened the disciples, so also our merciful God works good for us. But I tell you the truth, Jesus says, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Someone has rightly said, of all the gifts given to humankind by God, there is none greater than the presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus speaks about the mission of the Holy Spirit as the counselor. The Spirit empowers Jesus' disciples to proclaim the gospel with boldness, instructs them in the fullness of truth, strengthens them to bear witness to Christ in times of persecution, and defends them against the works of the devil. We see the Holy Spirit at work in the first reading of the day. The Spirit urges Paul and Silas to work and proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth, strengthens them during unjust persecution, empowers them to cast out demons, and enlightens them in their speech. The Spirit is the one who exposes the sin of unbelief for what it is, convinces the world that Christ, though condemned as a criminal, was truly righteous, and makes it known that Satan and every enemy of Christ will face judgment for rejecting him. There are several lessons we can learn from today's readings. The first is the call to renew our faith in the power of God over evil or the devil. The devil uses discouragement against us. He wants us to despair and turn our gaze from God. 
Jesus, though, invites us to turn to the Holy Spirit, the counselor, who convicts the world of sin, judges the devil, and shows us the path of righteousness. The second lesson is that we need to deepen our trust in the divine providence, especially when we suffer, go through trials and tribulations, and patiently endure as Paul did. Not only are we able to join our suffering to the redemptive passion of Jesus, but we are also consoled in our suffering, confident that our sorrow will one day turn to joy. The final lesson is the need to allow ourselves to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We can't save ourselves or sanctify ourselves through our own efforts. Salvation and holiness are the gifts of God. Let us surrender our will to God's. Amen. With confidence, let us present to God the needs of the church and of our world. Loving God, be with your church, with the Holy Father, our bishops, priests, religious deacons, and with all your faithful people. Today, as we come together as a community from many different countries, we ask for your guidance and blessings. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those asking for peace in their family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, hear our prayers and those of all who cry out to you in need and gather us all into your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you at more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosts 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, all the religious and clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world grant us peace behold the lamb of god behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those who are called to the supper of the lamb lord i am not worthy that you should come and my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go to share the love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Sing we praises to Our prayer book costs $10. If you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and send it to the NCBC, 5762 Highway 7 East, Post Office Box 54035, Markham, Ontario, L3P 7Y4. to be true, gracious Lord of all creation, take